Driving dish, driving dish, George is driving dish. Welcome back, everyone, to the George Niang Driving Dish Podcast number two. And I'm so blessed to be joined by my teammate, Spider D. Mitch Donovan. What's going on, man? Yeah, man. Appreciate you having me on. This is dope. I, I like this podcast. And um, we got to get the fans the shirts, too. Got to get the fans. Loving the shirt. First game back, I'm going to talk to some of our people and have one put on all the seats so they can rep the minivan. For sure. For sure. This is a hot topic, so we'll just dive into it first. And um, we all know, you know, that, you know, you had contracted, you know, uh, the coronavirus. And um, we all remember that night and you know what the locker room was like what it felt to have someone run on the court while we were you know getting ready to get on the game i guess for you is my next question for you would be is uh you know take us back to the locker room and how your mind or where your mind was at and and, and what you were thinking i, I know i how i was thinking was like man I'm, I'm putting on a mask and plastic gloves sitting next to boyan thinking like hey man like you're too close like do you have it do i have it like and then it and then it slowly escalated and turned into oh, shoot we all got it so you know what I mean let's enjoy this time you know while we're together because who knows when we'll be back. So yeah, I remember we were getting on the court, getting ready to warm up, and you know everybody in like suits just started running on the court. You know my initial reaction was like you know I didn't was even think about the virus. I was thinking about you know something crazy is about to happen in the arena. You know kind of like the FBI right on the floor. You know what I mean that's what it felt like. Um, and then obviously we found out, you know, that Rudy got it. And, you know, obviously we went back to the locker room. We were all sat there and it was a pretty like moment, like, moment we had. I feel like we all just got silent, you know. I don't know if you remember that when Coach said talk about it. And we got silent and then, you know, it was just like, that's when the look started to look around like, do you have it? You know, do you have it? And it was like three steps. You know, it went from like being nervous to putting the gloves on to being like, you know, jokingly nervous. And then like, you're like, you know what? We all have it. Like, you know, understanding that we were, cause we were there for what, six hours? Oh, man, it felt like 24, brother. Yeah, so we were in there for a while. So eventually we just was like, you know what? Like, let's just enjoy this time being around each other. And I think we got to, really got to know each other a little bit more too. Uh, I'm not saying it was a, it's a, like a little bit of a blessing in disguise, you know, like kind of just like, we got to know us as team as teammates. But um, at the end of the day, you know, fast forward to the next morning when I found out I had it, um, that's when it really hit, you know, and that's when I was like, you know, you get angry, you get sad, you get confused, you, you don't because you don't know, like you know, like, yeah, I had it, but yeah, I felt fine. So I'm like, all right, like, you know, what happens, and then. You know, it just goes everywhere, like boom. Within an hour, it's just like everywhere. You know, everybody's hitting me up, calling me. I'm laying in the hotel and I see, <laughs> I can't, I tried to turn on SpongeBob, but like even that gets interrupted, like, you know, with commercial breaks and stuff like that. So like everything is just, you're everywhere. And that was kind of one of the craziest things and it really hit you out that it was just um, what it was. You know, it, it's just funny how bits and pieces, you know, slowly start to come up after you have so much time to, you know, sit back and watch it. And it's like, not that we were joking around about it, but like, but we need to make sure that people on our staff don't get it. So, cause they have families and different things like that. And then you go back and obviously that morning, you know, when we found out, you know, that you had it, I mean, it was a tough morning for all of us. You know, it's kind of like you see someone else has it on your team, two people on your team have it. it it's, it's sad, but I, I guess I want you to more talk or talk more in depth about the fact that you didn't have any symptoms. Uh, you felt fine. Uh, is that scary to you? Because you, if you didn't get tested, you would have never known that you had it. And you know, you we we end up on this hiatus. You go back with you know Jordan and your mom Nicole. I mean, which we're going to get into later, which you're so close to, and you could have been you know, I don't want to say contaminating, but like spreading the virus to them without even knowing it. I think that's the wildest part about all this. You know, obviously uh, Rudy had symptoms. I believe Christian Wood had symptoms. I'm not sure about Smart, but KD didn't have symptoms. So it's pretty crazy to, you know, go through 
that when you, like you said, I was ready to play. I was ready to play against Oklahoma City the night, that night, you know, the night before. So um, I think that's, you know, when I, when, I, when I people ask me, I see it on Twitter or Instagram or when I talk to people, I say, look, like I could go play, like I said on, on, on my interview with Good Morning America, I said, like, I could play a game seven or seven game series right now if you needed me to. I think that's that's what's scary. I think that's what just reminds people to like, look, this isn't to be uh, treated lightly. You know, like, don't go outside. Don't, and it's not so much for yourself. If you can avoid it, I should say. Um, like, it's for others. You know, like you said, you know, fortunately, it was just, unfortunately, but fortunately, it was just two of us on the team and two of us who didn't have children. You know, my, you know what I mean? Like, you look at Joe, Ed, Mike, coach, like all the coaches, like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's, that's what's, you know, scary. They didn't have families around us, you know, that, that we kind of get back to. But now, obviously being with my family, I was nervous coming, coming back here, you know? And I think, I think people need to understand that it's not so much just for them, uh, but it's for people around them and who they may be going to. What have you missed the most about being quarantined? Fill us in, man. Honestly, you, you kind of miss like everything from like, you know, kind of figure out how to get out of a, how to get out of a three game skid. Like, you know, like the mental process, like to try and get through that. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like you miss those, like, you know what I mean? Like we, we went through it when we got back from All-Star break and then to win, I believe we went back, the win in Detroit was like huge. You know what I mean? The, the win in Boston were like, Mike, like we all, you know what I mean? Like those games, like you just, you're just like, man, like I've been watching a lot of the games. You know, I watched the Houston game, like, you know, you miss just moments. You miss, like you said, the everyday stuff, being able to just get it and drive in your car, you know? And, I haven't driven like in my car in two and a half weeks. You know what I mean? So like, don't forget to do that. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the that's the the crazy part. Like the little things, and you know, obviously I've been able to at least like you know be outside, but I can't leave my driveway. You know, I can't I can't leave my backyard. And being able to, I I, I did something funny. Like I kind of went and like walked to the end of the block and came right back because <laughs> I live on the end. So like I walked 10 feet and came back this morning. Once I got cleared, I was like, all right, like I got it. Like, you know, like you missed the little thing that just, and seeing people, you know, I think that's that's what you missed the most. I don't know. It's, it's kind of just opened my eyes that how many things that you touch your face on accident then touch something else. So it's no wonder this thing has spread. But anyway, I'm, I'm not saying I'm over Corona, but we can happily move on to bigger and better things. Um, I want to share a personal story, you know, that just opens up to, you know, that you're more than, you know, I mean, a basketball player, you know, you play video games, but a vivid memory of me is we, I had just moved in. We had lived in the, you know, the same apartment complex and uh, it was like a Sunday night and you texted me, Royce, and I forget who it was all in a group chat. You're like, yo, do you guys want to go ride some scooters? And I'm like, what is this kid talking about? Like riding scooters. <laughs> And literally, it was like a Sunday at like 5 p.m. And we're like racing to find, I don't know whether they're like greens or limes or whatever. And we literally had multiple fun just riding limes around downtown uh, Salt Lake City. Those are the scooters that for anybody knows that you can like prepay like on your phone. And literally, we had gone all the way up to like City Creek. And then I remember like one of ours dying and like you hopping on like the back and I don't know, just share, like, I mean, you're, you're a kid that can pretty much find fun in anything. So I guess, you know, the people want to know what what hobbies does Donovan Mitchell have that, you know, people don't really know about? Um, well, you know, I've been playing the drums since the fourth grade. So I wait, 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 time out, time out. So that drum set in your house isn't for, like, show? Like, you actually use that? Oh, no, I, I, I use it, for real. You think it was, yeah, yeah, I use that for real. Listen, people, this play, this is... Diamond has an upstairs and this drum set is in the corner as if like it was there, you know what I mean? Just to like fill a space. You're actually telling me you get back there and you get on your Travis Barker? That's my, hey, that's one of my favorite drummers too, Travis Barker, like, cause he was able to mix rap songs. So like I listen to rap, he's able to mix rap into, into drumming. So I really, I really liked it. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing this since fourth grade, bro. That and the saxophone, but I can't play that anymore. I'm not, I'm not too good. Hey. Fun fact, I played the clarinet, but don't tell anybody else that. I, I quit literally two months in. I would have loved to see that. I would have loved to see that. What, what else are we rolling with? Or are you just that simple? Xbox, for sure. I mean, Xbox is, um, 
video games is my thing. Um, big into the office. I don't know if that's really considered a hobby though, but big into the office. I don't know. I just like doing like, like you said, going around town, like literally just like walking and like people being like, is that really you? Like, no, I just take a walk. Like go to, like go to the bees games. Like I go to baseball games, obviously go to high school games. Like I don't, I don't just sit around. Like I like to be able to go around and do things, you know, go, go watch a football game on a Friday, you know, at high school or something like that. Go to the U, go to BYU, try and travel. I mean, I'm not here to toot your own horn, but that's why, you know, this community loves you and embraces you because, you know, you're you and you're not going to change for anybody. And you talked about, uh, you know, your sister Jordan and your mom, Nicole. I mean, I can't help but bring up, you know, the love and the passion, you know, that you have for them. I mean, that you display with us, you know, when they aren't around. I mean, just talk a little bit more about that. I mean, obviously we know your mom raised a heck of an individual. And just talk about your relationship with her and then kind of dive into your relationship with Jordan. I mean, Jordan is your younger sister, but she is kind of, you know, I wouldn't say a lot younger, but a good amount younger where you could be like, hey, you know, Jordan, like I'm living my life, you live yours, but you kind of involve everyone in your life. I mean, can you just kind of speak towards those relationships and how much they mean to you and how influential yeah. they are? The big biggest thing is like, you know, yeah, I went to private school growing up and I was fortunate to be able to do that. But, you know, the only reason why I was able to is because my mom was like sacrificing from her job. You know, she didn't necessarily take the career, like if she had a career going this way that she wanted to take. And then me and myself and Jordan were born and she decided to go this way and make it better for us, you know, and sacrifice, you know, that's really where it starts. And that was really the beginning of a lot of sacrifices she continued to make for myself and my sister. And that's really where the love comes from. Like, you know, I didn't really, as a kid, you don't appreciate it until you kind of get back and you're like, whoa, you know, even in, even up to, you know, high school, you never really understand, you know, and then you know, obviously I, I got drafted. And then at that point I was like, wow, like this is, I, my mom is really doing all this for me to get to this point. I don't think the NBA was in her thoughts when she, you know, decided to sacrifice more for us, but you know, she wanted a better education, wanted the best for, for us. And that's really where my love for them comes from because, you know, she could have easily said, you know what, I have my own career that's going to take me this way and I've been doing well, you know, but she kind of since kind of restarted and took me and my sister and just said, you know what, you guys are going to be the pillars. You guys are going to be the, like the forefront, you know, and I think that says a lot about her. And then for my sister, uh, she had an interesting childhood growing up because we, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. You know, I was away at boarding school and college, you know, um, she and she and we went to a school where a lot of her friends, you know, had a lot of money, you know, so when you grow up around that and then you're the kid without, I had to do the same thing. It's it's tough, you know, it's tough to be able to like when you're when you wanna get food but you don't wanna ask, you know, like as a kid, that's an awkward position to be in and that's really a tough spot, you know. And she sacrificed a lot as far as that goes. Not going to parties, uh coming with me on trips. I think that's like I said, that's where the love, you know, because they didn't have to do that. Neither one of them did, but they did. You know, so now that I'm able to be here in the position that I'm in, I'm like, look, you guys are with me this to the to the end because you guys were the main reasons why I am where I am today and who I am. Yeah, no, that's huge. And I mean, you guys are such a close knit group. And I mean, I think that's why you're, you are who you are, especially when it comes to being around us and the team where you're constantly trying to get us all together to go do things, whether it's scootering or I remember one time you asked to do laser tag. There was a time where we were hitting up Top Golf forever. And I'm like, you stink at golf. And you're like, hey, as long as we're all together, like, I'm cool. So no, that is, um, that's, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. And obviously, you know, can't say enough about you, but we're gonna talk some more about the NBA Donovan. I wanna, di I wanna dive into the spider. The spider nickname. Where the heck did that come from, dude? Like, what? What is that? My teammate's dad, growing up, it had long arms. You know, um, skinny yeah, no, though. Skinny no, with long arms. No hair no, on. Top. None, none of that, um, at all. And it didn't look too good, but I'm glad I got some hair now. Um, nah. So he gave me the nickname. 
and um, it's just because I could steal the ball. I don't, you remember the like a one two two press, you know, or one three one 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 of the two. I forgot. And it was like I just kept getting all the steals. My hands were everywhere. So he just called me the spider. And you know how you have those names like you call yourself, but no one else calls you it. So that's yeah, kind of minivan. Oh, <laughs> minivan. All right. Yeah. Now I got it. <laughs> exactly. Nah, but like that's that's um that's really how it started. And then you know you get to the NBA and the dunk I had against the Lakers. That's what really you know started it and then the dunk contest was like that's when it went boom like it just took off and that's when the name really became like a, a full-on brand and then um obviously had the shoe to to go with it as well and um here we are the takeoff for you has been kind of crazy and i've had a lot of time to think and you know reflect over these 14 days and i think of me being a young kid, being able to handle, you know, being in the NBA and, you know, having to live life on your own. Because before, you know, like prep school, you know what I mean? You have your meals, you have practice. People are always looking out for you. You're not getting paid, but someone's always taking care of you. College, same thing. We both played at high major programs. I sit back and look at like you and like, not only did you have to do that, but you were drafted, you know, obviously in the lottery. Um, to a team that had just lost Gordon Hayward. So, I mean, all eyes are on you. You know, what keeps you going or what keeps you motivated? Because, dude, you've achieved so much in three years. And I feel uncomfortable saying this because, like, I'd still be the one to send you a text being like, you ain't anything. You know what I mean? You, you stick. You know what I mean? But you've, you've achieved so much, but yet your grind still stays the same. The, the first thing for me is, like, understanding that this was not expected for myself you know i expect i was hoping to make it but you know it was like a lofty goal and then you kind of get all these things and it's like why change you know if i wasn't expecting to be here why now that i'm here why should i be any different you know um you know i'm growing up you hear the stories from guys like kobe uh bron Way like, like what's the consistent with all these guys they show up early to practice that's the one story i've always heard you know so i made it a point you know like okay you know whether this is before everything like i'm gonna be the first one there whether i have anything to do or not like i'm gonna be in the gym you know that's kind of you know obviously i don't have kids at home or a wife so like obviously i'm able to do that so guys and, then, and not to say other guys aren't working as hard it's just that you know, some guys have family obligations. You know, I'm fortunate, I'm just, I just don't. So right now I'm just going in there and I'm gonna be in the gym. I'm gonna be the first one in there, the last one to leave, you know? I think like it, it just sets, it sets an example, you know? And I think that's, that's been my mindset, you know, even before, even when Gordon left, you know, I wasn't expecting to come in and be the guy. We obviously, we had Rudy, we have Rudy and, and, and we had Hoodie. So I, I was just like, you know what? I'm a rookie, I gotta do my part. You hear all these stories about sometimes guys get drafted and they start to go this way, you know, or start to go that way. And then when you get a shoe, sometimes guys start to go this way, you know. So I'm trying to, every chance I get, every season, you know, the more that I've been, I've been given, you know, much, like you said, like when we had dinner that one time, much is required, you know. So being able to be like, you know, continue to go this way, you know, and you know, God willing, you know, things continue to go that way. But I want to make sure that my work continues to stay the same because once that changes, you know, what do you really? what are you really here for? Like, what are you doing? You know, I don't, I hear a lot of guys like get paid or get all these things and start to just relax, you know, and I'm trying to be, just be different, you know, and I think that's, that's where that comes from. I guess, you know, the pressure of letting down and not working as hard as you did, is that what keeps you showing up every, when we have shoot around an hour and a half early, is that what keeps you showing up early? Um, is that what keeps you, you know what I mean, consistently being in the weight room all the time? Are those the things where you just, you realize that you've received so much love from the Utah community, you realize that your family has sacrificed to push you to this point. Are those the things that, you know what I mean? You're like, I, I have so many people that I can't let down. So this is why I don't change what I do or who I am. That thing, you know, it's kind of one of those things where it's like you, you, you started here, you know, with your work ethic. You can't, you can't go any lower. You know what I mean? Like you said, the I set the bar high for myself. Like, look, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. You know, like I made the playoffs my rookie year. You know, people didn't expect me to be here, but I did. 
you know, now it's like, which way do you want to go? You know, and I think, and you know, I, I've gone this far, you know, trying to trying to be who I am and obviously my family sacrifices, you know, I'm not going to change up or switch up now. You know, I've been at points where in college, I didn't know if I want to continue playing or hit hit obstacles and, and stuff like that. And, you know, I think last year, playoff series was a big one for me. Um, as you know, I kept the stat sheet from our last game where I shot 423. Like, you know, it's they're gonna hit walls, but it's just how do you how do you push through them or figure out ways to get get through them? I know what you're talking about. At one point, you know, they'll say I'm an athletic uh, power forward. One day, I'll keep fighting that obstacle. And I just was watching the uh, Sacramento preseason game, and you had the reverse dunk. I forgot about that. You see I that? About that head. Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. I was I played it off cool too. I didn't even I do a celebration. I was like, wow. I was like, okay, like, okay. <laughs> to be honest with you, I was kind of shocked that I did it myself. I was like, this couldn't have happened. They're going to call a travel. The ball's going to pop out of the hoop. I can't believe this happened, but hey. Uh, but next, Donovan, I just want to, you know, I mean, talk about your, your brand. What plan, big plans do you have in the future, you know, that you can tell us about? I know you guys have track suits, uh, sweat, sweatshirts, obviously the shoe. Uh, no, nah, um, we got... A lot of things come well. It's kind of tough now because of the, the virus. So like you know, dates and everything are kind of being pushed back. But um, I won't confirm or deny that there's another shoe. But things are looking pretty good. You know, let's just leave it at that. You know, and um, but uh, there's other stuff. You know, like you said, I I have the stuff that people have seen me wearing that you know may or may not go on sale. You know, there's stuff that they haven't seen that may or may not go on sale. So. Um, but like I said, it's going to be a little different with the, um, with the virus going around. So like, you know, dates and manufacturing and all that good stuff is, is kind of, you know, all out of whack. That's great that you have a brand, you know, and Adidas is giving you the opportunity to express yourself and be who you are and, and give that to kids that are out there, adults that look up to you. Just a, just a fun thing. I mean... I guess your your game day routine. I mean, I, you're a weirdo anyway. So when I first came in, the, Donovan literally has a tub of double bubble. Double bubble. If you're watching this, hurry up and sponsor this guy so he doesn't. He so he can stop buying these huge tubs of double bubble. I've never seen someone chew on more gum before games than this character right here. Just run us through, you know, your game day routine. I'm sure the fans would love. To, to hear what weird stuff you do. It used to be, I used to listen to the same. So, you know, I'm, I play baseball. That's where the double bubble comes from. And that's where this next thing I'm about to share comes from. I was superstitious. You know, I was really, I really am superstitious, but I've gotten better. So like before I left the house at, at uh, our apartment complex where, you know, I would be blasting the same 10 songs from beginning to end. And I had to listen to those songs before I left it again. So like, I would wake up at my, what time would I shoot? I would shoot like four, 4.15. I'd have to be up by like 2.30, leave the house by 3.30. Even though know, I was like right down the street. Um, so listen to the same 10 songs, um, shower, do all that. You obviously gotta get a nap in uh, before all that, but get there. Um, now I, I get there, kind of have time to sit, you know, and just, relax and kind of just enjoy just being in the locker room, you know, talk. And then, man, it's been so long, I forgot what I do next. Um, <laughs> um, all right, no, no, okay, I got you. So then I go ahead, I watch my film um, with, with Johnny at the table. Yes, now um, let, me, let, me, yeah. let me chime in on this. This what, eating dinner and watching film with our assistant coach, Johnny Bryant, is taken extremely seriously. I saw Donovan, as I was making a coffee, tell Jordan Clarkson, poor Jordan Clarkson, I think this was like game two or three that he was here, Jordan was sitting at the same table and he tapped Jordan like, Jordan, hey man, uh, I'm really superstitious, but like, that's my seat, can you please? And you know, Jordan like, <laughs> lucky. oh yeah, man, ain't no problem, man. You, you didn't have to tell me, man. It's exactly how it went down too. I was uh, I was kind of like I didn't want him to think I was like weird, but I was like, look, like 
<laughs> you gotta get up. Like this is, this is who I see. So you don't understand. Play. <laughs> um, you know, to wrap this thing up, if you could give your, a younger you some advice or someone that is young and trying to take the same path as you, what would that be? I'll do two. I have one for the child and one for the parents. How about that? Don't let anyone tell you what you can and can't do. Um, and I, what I mean by that, like not by like doing things as a kid, but like what I mean by that is like your work ethic, you know, your goals, your expectations of yourself. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything. You know, you can't do something. I think Will Smith said that in the pursuit of happiness. I'm um, like, you can't. Don't let anybody say you can't. You know, that should not be in your vocabulary. You can do anything you want. You know, it may be tough. You know, maybe hard, but you can do it, you know, and I think that's one of the things I try and tell kids is, you know, they ask me, like, I got to play sports at, I got to play basketball at, at seven. I got to be a great, like, no, I, I didn't realize I was good enough to make the NBA until 20 years old and I'm 23, you know, so like, don't, don't say at seven, like, you have to do this. You know, I played so many different sports at seven. I did so many different things. I played the drums. I was in musicals, like, be a kid, you know, have fun. Because, you know, like you said, you know, you get to a point where you got to be grown. You got to think that there's bills. You got to wash your own clothes. Like, I don't think kids understand that. Like, that's a long process. Shout out to all the moms out there doing the laundry. All, all the moms. I think, like, people don't understand, like, that's, that's a, there's a process. So enjoy being a kid. Enjoy it. But also, don't let anybody tell you what you can and can't do as far as, you know, sports or art or music or whatever you want to be. Um, don't let anybody say what you can and can't do. And then for the parents, uh, as far as sports goes, it's totally strictly sports, let your kids play every sport they want. Um, I think, except I'm not going to big advocate on football. You know, I'm kind of, as if I have kids, you know, I'm going to be like, you know what, kind of stay away from, from football. But, you know, let kids, like, let them go out there. I think you look at all these guys, you look at, you know, Rudy played uh, soccer growing up. Joel Embiid played soccer growing up. Giannis, like, you know what I mean? We played, you played, what did you play? Everything, baseball, ice hockey. So you take, you take you bring up a picture things. of me playing ice hockey. I'm going to have to see that. And uh, at Tilton? No, I think I was like in the fourth <laughs> grade, man. It was terrible. <laughs> but no, like let kid, let your kids go out and just have have fun because you know you never know when those talents, what those talents may draw to. And I see a lot of kids on Instagram at, at nine years old trying to be the best basketball player ever. Like you know, you have so many years to do that. You know, so many years to be the best basketball player. Just enjoy it and have fun, and um, let your kids just be kids. No, that that is so well said, man. And like you said, people don't realize basketball is a small portion of our whole life, man. And I know we work hard and I know you work hard, but you know, there's so much more to life. And I think this quarantine has, you know, really showed us that, you know what I mean? That we do need to appreciate, you know, our environment, our community. It's not just basketball. That's not just the only thing. I mean, it's what we do and we love to do it, but is there is so much more to life. It doesn't mean that we're not going to work hard and try to be perfect at it, but there's so much more to life. But that being said, Donovan, thank you for being my guest on episode two of The Driving Dish with George Niang. Thank you again. We'll be back next week. Peace out, my man. Thank you, George. Appreciate everything. And Oh, this is dope. This is dope. And you're looking at one of the best ladies and gentlemen at this. Aspect. Not even just on our team, not even the NBA, but just he's, he's talented. Appreciate it, George. My man. <laughs>